In this video, we're going to create another kind of event loop. We're going to build a Win32 native application. Uh, its message loop is not unlike the other event loops that we've been creating so far in the playlist. So we'll, with Visual Studio 2017, which is freely available on Microsoft's website, uh, we will create another blank project. It's called Win32 App Loop. do is create a single source file. We're not using any C++ features, so we'll just do this all in C with the Windows header. Now, I don't know if this is true of prior versions of Visual Studio, but uh, it seems that now, depending on whether or not you create a main function or a win main function, uh, it detects the signature of the anterior point and will accordingly link either a Win32 uh, executable or a console application. So in this case, we are going to create a win main style entry point. And what you must first do when you're creating a win application and you want to GUI is you're going to create a class for the main window. Uh, like when we're working with React and you define a component, the class is sort of the uh, definition of a component, a control, or a window in the, the Windows world. So we're going to uh, populate the class structure here. The first thing we'll do is zero up the memory. We'll fill out some defaults here, the size of the structure. fill out these fields, the call to register the class is going to fail. So you've got to be meticulous about this. And we're going to need to define a class name. Now, again, with the React analogy, this would be like the component name, but we're going to create a global constant for this string, and we'll just call this thing main window class. <clears throat> now, we are going to try and register the class. And if that fails, we're going to display a message box and abort early, so it's a fatal error. We haven't given this thing a window procedure yet, so this class is kind of meaningless. However, uh, what a window proc or procedure will do is it allows us to catch a series of predefined event types. So in the same way that with our SFML example, we were receiving mouse events, keyboard events, resize events. Windows also exposes a wide library of event types that you'll be able to intercept here. Otherwise, there is a def window proc or a default window procedure that you return and it sort of defers uh, the handling of that event to the system. So we're going to create a window procedure for our main window here. We'll call it main window proc. And its arguments are handle to the window. It's the element window itself, message type, and the parameters to that. and L param sometimes I mistake. So let's just double check. Yes, L param is last. Okay. So in this case, the follow through behavior will be we'll, we'll return the default window procedure. Or 
we're going to create a switch statement. And if the window is closed, we're going to post quit message, a successful error code, and break. Post quit, me post quit message is going to cause our application event loop to terminate. And uh, all the windows will be destroyed. So we won't have a process running in the background. Um, so now that we've created this window procedure, we're going to reference it in the class, which is the Last information there. We need to also set a background variable, and we'll just make this a little gray window. All right. So now we're going to need a handle to a window. We're going to create a window using this class that we've registered, hopefully. So using our window class and we're going to need a title so we'll say um, test window five hundred by five hundred window in the upper left corner it doesn't have a parent doesn't have a menu we do have an H instance provided to us in the entry point and this last argument will also be null So if this fails, we will also display a message box indicating the fatal error and return. All right, so hopefully this will create a window. So far, so good. Uh, now we're going to need to actually enter into that event loop. So what we've got is a object or a structure called message rather and a message is going to allow us to use the Win32 API to, like in our SFML example where we were pulling events from the window class, here we're going to instead uh, receive all the application events. And then, although there are a series of application, uh, sorry, utility functions that allow you to peek and work on the message queue, here we're just going to do the trivial case, which is to translate the message and immediately dispatch it to whichever components in the window. Again, this is the manner in which we'll find that if we inspect the process, it's able to sleep whenever it's not working, as we would expect. Probably many calls to wait for single and wait for multiple objects. Canonically, you would turn W pram, oops. But let's see. Well, what if we've forgotten? And is it still running? Yes, it is still running. Oh, we haven't made the window visible. So now let's recompile. And there it is. Our trivial case. Window with no elements. Uh, no particular style features, aside from it being a WS overlapped window. And uh, let's open up API Monitor. Get a quick look at this, and then we'll wrap up the video. I'm going to have to target X. 6664 if we want to use the 64 bit tooling my bad
There we go. Now what's nice here is that we notice quickly um, when we don't have the window actually activated, the only thing that's really getting called and pulled on is def window proc here fairly consistently. However, as soon as we uh, brought the window to focus, all of a sudden we see all the painting code and the windows theming code and so on. Those calls are suddenly being logged. Again, the point is that the best code that we can write is the code that isn't running at all and event loops are a great pattern. Uh, so here's yet another instance of the Omni pattern, the event loop.